Okay. Hi. We're going to be working on the throwing part of the throw game. So the first thing that we actually need to do is we need to be able to click down on the ball and then be able to drag it so that we can throw it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to be listening as to whether or not the user has clicked down on the ball. So of course we need an event listener for that. So we'll be pointing to my ball. Uh, add event listener. And uh, this is going to be uh, what type of event? Uh, clicking down on, that's a mouse event of course. And uh, this is going to be using a mouse down. We haven't actually used that yet. Um, and so uh, we're going to be doing a mouse down. And let's just create a function called drag me. So drag me. All right. We have the event listener. And let now we just need to create the function drag me to go along with this. So I'm going to go down below move ball after this. This is the uh, second. There's one, two, three, four curly brackets at the bottom. Uh, there's going to be two left at the bottom. And then I'll start my private function. And no capital F, sorry about that. And this is drag me, yeah. And uh, what do we want to put in the parentheses? Yes, that would be E colon. Yeah, what type of event? Yes, mouse event. Okay, and void, we're not returning a data type. Okay, now. The first thing that we want to do is we want to turn off our event listener that's listening for uh, clicking down on the ball because uh, we're already at that spot so we don't want to be listening for it anymore. So uh, I like to go ahead and copy my add event listener so that I can just change it to a remove. That way I don't have to worry about whether or not I spelled things correctly. I'll paste that in there and then we'll just change that to remove. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put in our, uh, our, our dragging function and we did this day, uh, last week so we're going to be talking to my ball and it's just simply the start drag and we do want it to set the parameter to true so that it pops the ball into the middle of the, or the mouse into the middle of the ball. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and run that. And so now I'm going to click on the ball and I'm trying to drag it, but you can see, oh, it's pulling, it's pulling. That is because we have all those other physical forces. We have still the move ball function that's running and running the gravity. So what we want to do is we need to turn that enter frame event listener, we need to turn that off. We need to remove that. So that way it's not uh, trying to animate the ball while we're dragging the ball. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And I, like I said, I like to always remove my event listeners first. So after I do my remove event listener for the uh, drag me and the mouse down, I'm going to go ahead and remove my enter frame event listener here. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about when I click down on this. Yes, look at that. It's, it's dragging around. Uh, the only problem is that it's not releasing. I can't let go of it. 
So what we need to do now is we want to listen for when the mouse is let up. So we're dividing the mouse interaction into two parts. We're uh, doing something when the mouse is pressed down and we're doing something when the mouse is the mouse button is let up. Okay, so after we st start our drag, let's go ahead and create an event listener for uh, listening for uh, letting up on the mouse. And we want it to be relative to the whole stage. So no matter where we let up on the mouse, it it catches it and and um, runs our function. So here we go. Of add event listener. And this is also, of course, a mouse event like we had before. And uh, then with this time, though, we are using the mouse up. So we're going to be using the mouse up. And why don't we go ahead and point to a function that we will call stop me. Okay. So now we're listening for letting up on the mouse button. Okay, so now we do need to go ahead and create the uh, stop me function. So I'll do that next uh, outside after the drag me function. So private function stop me e uh, colon and mouse event of course again just like we had before void no return data type okay now once again the first thing that we want to do is we want to turn off our event listener that launched this function and that is this one so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that again and paste that in and change that to remove. And then, of course, the next thing we want to do is we want to, of course, stop dragging the mouse. So, my ball. I dot stop drag. Okay, so now we're stopping. We're going to stop dragging the mouse. Of the ball, sorry. Okay, so when we uh, go ahead and um, run this, what we'll see, of course, is that we can grab onto it. I let go, but it's not uh, starting up and animating again. And so, in order to get that to start bouncing again, which is what we want to have happen when we let go of the ball. We need to, of course, turn back on. We need to turn back on our enter frame. So let's do that. Okay. So uh, we can either, you know, copy and change it back to add, or we can copy our enter our add event listener up at the very beginning and paste it down here. So now that's going to turn that back on. Turn our animation back on. And so I'm going to let go. I'm going to go ahead and catch it. I'm going to let go. There it goes. It starts bouncing again. And oh no, I can't click on it. Look at that. Oh no. What do I need to do to make it so I can drag it again? Well, I know what you're, you're saying. Hey, we need to also go ahead and turn this event listener back on that we had at the beginning that listens for the mouse down. We need that one again too. Yes, so we're going to copy that one and we're just going to paste that one in as well. So we're just creating a nice little circle here where uh, the uh, we click down on it and now I'm holding down on the mouse button 
and it's listening for me to let up on the mouse and I'm going to let go on it and now it's going to start listening for me to click down. Now it's listening for me to uh, let up on the mouse. Oh, I love it up on the mouse. Now it's listening for me to click down on that ball. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, now the only problem is, is now we need to go ahead and make it so that when I throw the ball, you can see that when I throw the ball, it doesn't necessarily go um, as fast as maybe I'm like, you know, throwing it. And we need the velocity of the ball to change based on how fast I'm throwing this ball. Okay, so we are going to be creating a tracking function which is going to be keeping track of basically constantly updating to find out where the ball is uh, relative to itself at any given moment, even kind of even between the frames. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is um, up here at the top, uh, we're going to be declaring two private variables. And the first one is going to be original x, and uh, that'll be a number. It has to be a number because it, they'll probably be in decimal points at some times. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give it an initial value of 0. Then we're going to do one for the y. So private var original y number equals zero. Okay, give that initial value. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and when the, we're going to go down to drag me because when the uh, ball is clicked down and we want to start dragging. What we want to do is we want to capture where the ball is at at that moment. So we're going to say original x is equal to my ball dot x and original y is equal to my ball dot y. So we're going to capture, oh, let's spell ball correctly. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're just going to capture uh, the exact placement of the ball when it's clicked down at that moment. And now what we can do is we can use that value to start calculating a new Vx and Vy. So what we're going to do is we need to, we're going to create a function, a tracking function. So after the stop me function, we're going to create our tracking function. And this function is going to be based off an enter frame event listener. So we'll just do e event. And no return type. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to say we're going to be start recalculating Vx and Vy. And we're going to take a look at Vx and we're going to say um, that we want it to equal whatever the uh, current ball position is and minus the original x 
And so basically what we're doing is basically in, you know, between frames almost really, um, we are calculating how far the ball is moving basically from frame to frame. And of course, the greater number of pixels uh, that it's traveled um, between the frame entering, uh, the playhead entering the frame, the greater the velocity will be. And uh, the less number of pixels, of course, the less velocity. So, and we're going to do this for the VY as well. So, same thing, my ball, except uh, pointing to the Y value, minus original Y. And I think I just spelled that wrong. Yes, I need an I in there. Okay, original Y. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to constantly be updating the new position of original Y. So as it's coming into the frame, uh, it, uh, it, the ball will be at a one position, but as it's leaving the frame, we also want to know, we want to redefine uh, where that original X is going to be um, so that we can actually have a difference um, between um, the beginning uh, the, a value between the beginning of entering the frame and exiting the frame. So we'll say original x. We'll first start by uh, arranging that. Oops, my keyboard freaked out there and jumped up there. Original x. And we're just going to have it equal to my ball dot x and original y equal to my ball dot y. So we're just seeing the difference between when it enters and exits the frame, and that's going to become really the vx value and the vy value. Okay, now we just need to turn on, now we just have to create our event listener, our enter frame event listener that will run this tracking function. Now, where we want to turn this on, let's, uh, where do you think we want to turn this on? Where do we want to be tracking our, uh, our mouse? Well, it's when we're dragging, right? So, yes, in the drag me function is where we're going to turn on the, create the event listener for running the tracking. So we'll just go ahead and add events listener and event enter frame and we are running the tracking function. Okay, so we turn it on when we are dragging around and it's tracking, 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 following us, what we're, how fast we're moving the, the ball around. And then when we let up on the mouse, we don't want it to track anymore. We don't, you know, we want it to stop tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Uh, after I'm removing my mouse up, I'll go ahead and remove my enter frame for tracking. Okay, let's run this and see what we have. Okay, so I'm clicking down and I, I gave that a good swoosh and now I'm gonna just gently, oh, it's some gel till, and now I'm gonna give it a big, a big push again and try to catch it, no, I'll be gentle. So it is, it's tracking right now how many pixels it's moving basically, like I said, from the um, beginning, from when the plant enters the frame to the exits of the frame, and I'm, you can see if I'm like going like bah, like really crazy, it's going to be moving a lot. So therefore, the uh, velocity ends up being a lot. But if I'm very gentle and I'm just like, then it doesn't move out hardly at all.